So you wanna learn how to play the piano but have no idea where to start. In today's video, I'm gonna show you where to start and I'll break down what options you have based on your goals. I'll also be breaking down what I think are the three most important elements you need to learn no matter what your goals are. Here we go. All right, hey guys, this is Pierre with Pierre Cohen Piano. Um, before I metaphorically guide you through uh, your musical journey, you need to ask yourself first what your goals are. Uh, and you may not know the answer to that yet, so a good starting point might be to figure out what styles of music you like to listen to the most, you know, what genre you, do you like to listen to. Once you've figured that out, then figuring out where to start is going to be a heck of a lot easier. So I recommend uh, listening to a bunch of music if, you don't, if you're not sure, you know, Spotify, YouTube playlists, just figure out what styles of, of music you like to play, and then you can continue to go from there. All right, next, I need to talk about what I think are the three most important elements to learning the piano, no matter what your goals are. All right, the first element is technique. Technique is basically your hand's ability to move around the piano, play music um, in a way that doesn't uh, make your hands feel uncomfortable, that doesn't create tension in your hands when you're playing faster passages. Um, it's basically the, it's, it's having coordination of the hands, essentially. Um, and there's a millions, millions of ways to develop it depending on what technique because there are so many varied techniques, but the most broad and all-encompassing techniques that we teach beginners are basically scales and chords and broken chords. Um, and I'll get, I'll get into those in another video, but that's essentially what technique is. All right, the second element is sight reading. Now, sight reading is basically your ability to open up a piece of music uh, with notes and be able to read it comfortably your first time having never seen it before. Um, now, there's a lot of books out there that help you develop that skill with, uh, there's method books, there's just learning actual songs. The hard part about that is that you have to find ones that are at your level and that may be difficult. And there are a lot of resources, resources that I can point you to. Again, that'll be for another video. And the third element is music theory. Music theory is basically understanding how the relationships between the notes that you play in a piece are or what key you're in and understanding how the chords within a key relate to one another and how you can play that same song in a number of different keys. Um, it's basically your understanding of how all music relates to one another. Um, now, you can study it directly in workbooks, uh, but also by analyzing the songs that you're learning. Um, so that's also a great route. So we've got technique, sight reading, music theory. And ideally, you should be spending every day working on these three things on top of whatever songs or pieces you're learning. So uh, is it necessary to work on these three elements uh, in order to learn songs and pieces? No, not necessarily, uh, but it's gonna vastly increase the speed at which you can learn those pieces. So there's a steep learning curve. At first, you're gonna feel like you're moving on your technique, your sight reading, and your theory very slowly, but all three of those elements are gonna come together to help you with all of your other songs that you're learning. So it kind of just, makes the whole process of learning music and songs in general quicker. Now I've been teaching piano and guitar for over 12 years and the students who retain the most information and learn the quickest are the ones who have a really, really strong foundation in their sight reading, in their technique, and in their music theory. The ones who actually spend time directly training those. All right, now let's go back to your goals and genres of music that we were talking about earlier. So hopefully now I can start you off in the right direction and incorporate those three elements that we talked about and explain to you why those three elements are so important to know to help you on your journey. For example, you might want to sing and play popular songs from the radio, uh, your favorite Taylor Swift song. And uh, in that case, having a firm understanding of chords will help you get there the quickest, right? So there's chord websites like Ultimate Guitar, which show you the lyrics and chords of your favorite songs. And if you know all your chords, then all you have to do is pull up a chord chart, like say from that website, and uh, you can play the song right away just with the words and chords in front of you. Um, so having a good understanding of music theory and chords is important there. Um, chords would fall under the music theory category as well as being able to switch between the chords would involve some technical practice as well. And hey guys, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't and click the little bell icon so you get all the notifications when I do pop up new videos because I'll, be I'll be providing you with a bunch of new videos coming up soon. All right, let's keep going. Let's just say you're not a singer and you just wanna play instrumental arrangements of your favorite songs or classical pieces. So at this point, you have a few options. You can look up tutorials on YouTube and just follow along. I'm making tutorials, I've made tutorials, and they're really helpful um, if you're just wanting to learn a specific song. Um, but if you're 
trying to learn a song that's outside of your technical level, be prepared to spend a lot more time on it than, it sh than you should. Now, how long does that take? It depends on the person, but I like to say that a piece that's at your level should take you somewhere, anywhere from one to three months to master and have performance ready. Um, some others might argue, depending also on the length of the piece, but it also depends on your level of patience and how much you like the piece. So if you are willing to put in the time to learn a song that you love and are okay working on it for a year, that's cool. Just know that if you had more developed technique and a better understanding of sight reading maybe or theory, you could maybe spend that time learning those foundations and then taking a lot less time to learn that favorite song of yours down the road and learn more songs while you're at it. Aside from going on YouTube or online to look at video tutorials, you can grab the sheet music to classical pieces and pop music or popular songs and uh, start sight reading it. Now, this is gonna be a difficult process at first because learning to sight read can take a long time. Um, you know, you might ask yourself, you know, why bother learning to read the notes when I can just find a video tutorial on YouTube? And there's some truth to that. However, once your sight reading foundation becomes very strong, you'll be able to learn all those pieces so much faster. So it's kind of, you're investing your time in something, a foundational thing that's going to help you a lot more in the future. And that's why I recommend doing sight reading every day. Um, so even if you're doing it for like say 10 minutes, that is going to help towards all of the other stuff that you're doing uh, as you're learning your songs. Now, another goal you might have is to learn jazz and blues and to improvise music uh, and to play by ear. Now, this isn't very easy at all for beginners. Uh, and uh, a firm grasp of music theory and ear training and understanding the relationships between the notes will help you a lot more uh, in accomplishing this and help you improvise much faster. So theory is an indispensable tool of jazz pianists and musicians because they you have to understand different scales and modes, um, which we'll talk about in another video, to help facilitate your learning of, and improvising of different styles of jazz and blues. So like I said, those three elements are gonna help you on your journey while you learn all your favorite songs. I'll be soon posting a video uh, covering technique and what you can specifically do to help improve it. I'll also be doing the same thing for a video with sight reading. I'll be giving you uh, resources and sight reading books that I've used with students and for myself and how to improve it as quickly as possible. I'll also be posting videos on music theory and my favorite resources to help you develop that skill. So to recap, feel free to start learning any of your favorite songs, whether it's the chords and singing, whether it's musical arrangements on YouTube, whatever the means is, of course, finding a good teacher, that's always helpful. But be sure to focus daily on, your, on those three foundations. Um, because those will stick with you for the rest of your life. You know, I've had students who uh, wanted to just focus on learning songs and just could play the notes, their hands could learn the notes easily enough, and they, and they played the songs, but um, they would forget them very quickly. They wouldn't have an understanding of knowledge, so it wouldn't translate well to other songs. If they learned other songs that were similar in style, it wouldn't quite click because they didn't, ha they didn't have that foundation. So, um, again, should it be a reason that you don't play the instrument? No, especially if you're doing it casually but it is gonna be helpful in the long run. All right guys, hopefully this video helps you steer you in the right direction. Be on the lookout for more videos coming soon and I'll see you in the next one.